Good evening. I'm Father Russ Carmichael, and this is Street Talk. I want to thank you all, like I do every uh, time I go into your house, for allowing me in. I want to thank you all for following the show. Uh, many, many supporters uh, all over. Now you see us all over the state and on YouTube. Um, well, I'm really, uh, really thankful to Dominic. Dominic uh, Cotton is sitting right across from me, my co-host, who's done, oh man, monumental work in getting the work out because we've needed to affect the whole state and uh, and we're reaching people that have been supporters of ours for a very long time who now are able to see us and uh, and see the program one way or another and uh, even though they get our written stuff they they they're able to see me live and and actually I've been in pretty good mood because we've had such good shows tonight Dominic and I are going to talk about the different things that happen uh, this past week, uh, Dominic uh, did a tremendous amount of work, okay, on the juvenile sentencing stuff for us. And when I say for us, I mean us uh, ex-convicts and stuff like that that have been working on this stuff for years and years and years. Uh, uh, without his help, we've talked to both sides of the aisle up there in the legislatures. We've all the people who have supported and looked at this legislation are really, truly trying to do the right thing. Uh, okay, and and usually, uh, usually I don't say that. Usually I'm I'm fighting and screaming. Uh, you know, we do lawsuits, as most people know. You know, we challenge through litigation. And for those who people who have followed the juvenile sentencing thing, we got Supreme Court rulings coming down. We got more coming. But uh, the biggest one was the one that said, you need to take a second look. And uh, it's been stalled in the legislature, and apparently this year is looking really, really good. Sides have come together. People have come together. Dominic uh, and, and myself, I, I was able to talk to the other side because of his, uh, his ability to uh, be... Uh, cooler than I am. A, chame uh, a chameleon, I think you probably uh, call me on some days. Well, yeah, on some <laughs> days, okay. But uh, all, what, is, what was really good is everybody was really concerned and really trying to do the right thing and find the common ground. And so that, that, that was a big thing. And then, uh, of course, the notice on the disabilities, mm -hmm. we'll talk about that too. And, and, and uh, and, and, and what we did there. The hard thing this week for me was, of course, Ralph Ham, okay, who's an associate partner of mine, who's on his 47th year in uh, the Massachusetts prison system. Uh, okay, most people know uh, Ralph, uh, we, we do his books. So he's got several books out. He's got another one that's coming out in six weeks, Blackberry Juice. He's, uh, he went in at 17. Uh, the crime was a horrific crime. There's no, uh, there's no getting around it. I've never said it wasn't. Okay, three, three guys. They beat up a girl. There was a rape involved. The two older gentlemen, the leader, uh, Ralph was the youngest at 17. He was a kid, just 17. Uh, okay, went along with it. And uh, those two older guys have been out for 25 years. Ralph is the only guy I know that spent 47 years, nobody, nobody died. Uh, there was a beating and stuff like that, but, but nobody died. And they were drinking and drunk and they had come out of a fight and all that stuff. I mean, I mean, nobody's saying that, I never said that the crime was like some little crime. I mean, the crimes I did were not little crimes. I mean, I was organized crime, okay? Anybody who understands what organized crime is, uh, okay, you're talking serious crimes, I, and, uh, and and my associates are not uh, what I call hubcap thieves, and the ones that chase their lives around uh, were not, uh, you know, were not your um, the nicest guys in the world, and neither was I. Uh, okay, it was a loan shark, a bookmaker. Uh, okay, and you'd wish that you never owed me any money. Okay, and. Uh, those were those days when you're stupid and I, I, I use the word ask something and somebody said, oh no, Father, you're not. I was, I was not a very nice young man, <laughs> to, to say the least. 
Not that I'm a nice guy now, but you know, I take a different tune now. But well, go ahead. I'm, I, I go guess ahead. one I'm, one thing that, that that strikes me in all of this, and and, and um, you know, because I see a lot of different comments uh, from people, um, and I was just looking through because um, we put our face our our our, uh, our our testimony up online on Facebook and. Uh, you know, people were talking about, well, you know, being drunk doesn't excuse you, excuse you from a crime. Right. And, and I agree. Right. But on the other hand, um, you can't say that one mistake in your life defines your whole life, especially um, at the age of, of 17. And I know pe pe people have, have brought up... Uh, you know some of the horrific things that have that have happened in, in, in our state, and uh, they're talking about Adam Lanza. Adam Lanza wasn't going to be affected by this piece of legislation because he wasn't below the age of eighteen when he committed his his, his crimes. Yeah, he uh, was older. Right, yeah, right, yeah, same right. same thing. Somebody somebody brought up in, in testimony about about the Cheshire. Right, situation, uh, situation, and 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 again, they, they, they these these these, these yeah. weren't people that they, had they, anything, anything to do, to do. Right, right. Uh, with 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 uh, what the Supreme Court were, were, we're was looking about. about. Exactly um, right. So, you know, you're talking about adolescence. Um, people are more likely uh, to be uh, impulsive at that age. Not everybody across the board. Uh, different people mature at, at different ages. But when they're in these set of circumstances where maybe they don't have all the uh, education, um, that they, they don't learn, um, you know, the, 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 the appropriate skills on, on being able to manage themselves, but they don't have an opportunity to get out of their, their family situations or other communities along those lines. Whereas when you're an adult, um, you, you are held more accountable um, because the actions are, are, are more volitional. Um, you, 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 you have those choices w within yourself when you're older, whereas when you're younger, you're, you're, you, you don't have that maturity. Your brain hasn't developed to the point to be able to consider all those things. Well, one of the most difficult things is, is, is and when you're talking about crimes, a, a lot of crimes are different. I mean, I mean, there's robbery, but the circumstances are different, the people are different, and everything when, when, when something happens. But we're talking about basically under 18 years old, basically children, mm -hmm. immature, brains not, brains not developed, science knows this, mm -hmm. okay, uh, impulsive uh, in, in, in what they do. Uh, not being able to control their emotions and, and stuff like that. That's, that's what we're talking about. And we're talking about long, indefinite life sentences. Uh, okay, okay, not necessarily, well, now there's talk of numbers, but not necessarily numbers. Uh, okay, that was what Miller and, and were talking about. We were talking about a second look. Let's see mm -hmm. where these, we're, we're, we're talking, these people have done time and everything, and then we'll stop at a certain area. In fact, this is like what happens to Ralph. Okay, Ralph, Ralph is rehabilitation. I have not seen the decision yet. It should have been posted, but it hasn't been told, posted in Massachusetts. They talk about all the wonderful things he's done. He's a publisher, self-educated, graduated Boston University, cum sum laude. And they gave him a five-year setback, saying he's not rehabilitated. Forty-seven years, this black man has been in there. The two other perpetrators that were older than him have been out 25 years. So apparently he's not, he's not there for the original crime. I mean, we know, I know mm -hmm. what it is. He's doing time for me and my associates who are political, unionized the prison, cost the state of Massachusetts millions of dollars, got people fired, the guards walked out of Walpole, the most violent prison in the country, and it went from the most violent prison in the country to the most tranquil for almost three and a half, well, for three and a half months until they, and the guards instituted a riot to come back in. And, and of course, Governor Sargent blamed his election on us. 
Okay, he's paying for that. He's paying for all that. He's paying for what went down in 1973 politically. And he developed education programs and so he's not paying for the crime that was actually no. committed. But our sentencing bill that we're talking about is, is taking a look at individuals who obviously under that certain age have done a period of time. Let's look and see where they are and is it viable to give them a chance to come back in society. That is a whole nother story. I mean, that's a whole TV show of rehabilitation, yeah. responsibility. I mean, that's what I do. Right. Okay, my guys and me, uh, we're not nice guys. I always say Jesus is my straitjacket. And thank God, and people better hope the straps are always tied. Okay, because there is a core belief that you chain the beast. And I was old enough at a certain time to start to figure that out. And a lot of my associates who were, you know, were able to change their lives because we reached a certain age and realized dead in the street and killing people is not the place to be. So they got out. Don't let anybody say you can't get out because that's a bunch of bull too. You can get out. I don't care who you are. I don't care what the organization is. If you want to get out, you can get out. Okay, and many of my guys have done it, and, and girls, believe it or not, and ladies, and, and have done pretty well over, over the years. You have to give up a lot of things. But you can change, everybody changes, and, you, and you're changing all the time. I mean, science tells you you're changing. You're not, well, I mean, you know. I, I look, I'm a different person than I was 10 years of course, ago. Of course. 20 years ago, yeah. you know, 30 years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're in, on an evolution. Exactly, exactly. And, and hopefully, you know, the more you're aware, you, the further you're, you're going to go when you see a lot of these things within yourself. But, you know, this whole uh, uh, thing, you know, of, of, of uh, really um, helping out to pull, to pull together uh, two, two different groups of people, which are the two different parties. Um, right. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the issues that we, we, we really saw within this um, were that uh, you looked at a bill that was supposed to be called, it never got called because they threw these, like, nasty amendments onto this thing <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and they were trying to get attention so, and I'm talking about uh, the Republican senators um, and uh, they felt like they hadn't been listened to right they'd been ignored they right. uh, they'd been run over yeah. uh, to, to a certain degree and they were making a statement yeah and it was okay you want to have your way go ahead we're gonna make you pay for it al along the lines yeah. but um, you and I knew that there was an issue along those lines, and we actually, we went around, I think, probably to about at least eight or nine different Republican senators throughout the whole state. Um, they were nice enough to listen. They, they, they were. They <laughs> were. us in the office. <laughs> Out at their houses <laughs> for, 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 for fundraisers. For, yeah, let us know. Um, yeah. And, 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 yeah. and we, we sat down and we kept yeah. on asking them, well, right. you know, what was, what was the issue? You know, do you understand about the brain stuff and right. everything else? And, um, you know, we kept on getting back that, well, you know, the bill went too far. The bill went too far. And, and but no, like, specifics. Yep. I mean, I try to, you know, I'd be like, yeah. try to get them down. Okay, let's have a, what is it? Let's have a meeting down at, like, uh, the boat <laughs> club that I belong to. You want to join? <laughs> Let, let's have you down here. Let's go sit down and talk about so this. So we can figure out what this is. Um, I think I nailed, like, uh, uh, John McKinney probably about, like, three different times. Yeah, I'd, show up, I'd show up at his events. That's what I do is I, I show up, and I... And I talk to people and so I show up and uh, we, we showed up at least like two or three of like his different like oh, events yeah, to it's... sit down and talk with him and 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 uh, and again you know we got that that it went beyond but we wouldn't get a specific answer that's right um, and so um, I started going to uh, Len Fasanos because yeah. I knew he was going to be the next 
minority leader, and uh, I'd show up at, at his, his constituent coffee hour every month because he has it, you know, yeah. once, once a month he has it with, he like, his folks his up folks, in North Haven. Right. So I'd show up at everyone. And the first one, he was actually, he was very good. He's like, you know, yeah, I, you know, we, I, we'd like to see something done about this. And, and we started talking about it back and forth. And he was like, well, let me set you up to sit down with, uh, with our caucus. Right. Um, you know, then we had, like, the, the election. And I don't think he was too, you know, ecstatic after the election. And, you yeah. know, their guy lost in the governor's situation. Um, but, you know, we, I kept on going, showing up. And we kept trying to push this issue. And... Um, you know, he, he, he finally agree, he agreed, and we, we sat down, and, and, and we're, we're sitting there talking to him. And he hands us over the bill. <laughs> and it was dated. Yeah. It was dated February, uh, February of last year. Right, right. Had the three main people on it. His right. name, yeah. you know, John McKinney's and, right. and, and Kissel, who's, who's yeah. the ranking member. Right. And what they were saying was not far off of. No, it certainly was not. I mean, and they weren't like major issues. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about they wanted to make sure that, um, number one, these were definitive sentences of 10 or more years. Right. So instead of like people who could like get, have three different crimes and they run their, they run their, um, their sentences at the same time. Consecutively, right. right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Con they, concurrent, right. Concurrent. Concurrent. Then they, they, they would be eligible they to would, be a part they of would, this. Yeah, exactly. And they were saying, no, this should be people that have long... Long sentences. Long like sentences. Yeah, which yeah. they were right. <clears throat> right. So yeah, right. Um, uh, um, there, was, there was that one. Notice There's of notification no, to no, the... Notification so that um, victims, uh, vic victims know right, that, it, that, that people are going to be up earlier... Then you know, for a look, and right. that they might, you know, have to face or face deal with this, right? Yeah, which is uh, uh, themselves, yeah, you know, as and as victims, to you right. know, have to keep, you know, have to go through it. They should have notification that that, that which that's going to happen. Which is right. We we, we which we, which is appropriate. Know, yeah, right. right. Um, and then the last one had to do with uh, considerations that they make when when they actually sentence. So this is like going forward. Right. They're, they're supposed to uh, make sure that they have a pre-sentence investigation, mm -hmm. right, right, right. which takes into account all the factors of, the, yes. of their youth and their circumstances yeah. and everything else. Mm -hmm. And what they were saying was it should be for A and B felonies, which are, you know, sentences that are 10 or more years. Or more years, right. So, right. so it falls within the perspective of, of the bill. So we're looking at them going, are you kidding me? That was the, it. This, 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 this is it. What? You know, there, there's not something else. And the, and he's like, look, and he, and he and he's telling us, you know, this, and we should be taking the money, and we should be like putting it into education for 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 this this population, right. the money savings. It right. it shouldn't just be, uh, you know, oh, we're doing this because we're saving money. No, he was saying, put it back into to, to the rehabilitative programs. Right. Give people the the opportunities. Like we know, education is is the best way to ensure that you're 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 not going to be having somebody coming in and out uh, and having re recidivism. Uh, 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 um, clear common ground. Common grounds. Well, clear common well, ground. I mean, you were, you and I were in this room. I, 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 I was amazed. I was I was amazed. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know. I mean, I said to. Uh, Mr. Kissel, I said, you've got to be kidding me. I, you know, I represent that population, the, uh, the, 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 the prisoner population, the ex-convicts. I, I said, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't see anything here that I could not have signed off on that I, that from, from the legal standpoint, from the, you, you know, from the lawsuits kind of thing, well, I, we agree with all that there, and he went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, absolutely. Can, can right? you give us his bill? You, he printed the whole thing off right? for me. Yeah. So, so I, I took it and I so matched it up against what, the, the, uh, the original. The original bill. Right? Line, 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 line for, for line. line. And picked out the different parts, and then um, we had been meeting with uh, Senator Coleman, who's, who's who the head I, of judiciary. Who's, who who's, I love. He's a good guy. <laughs> I, yeah. I, used to, I, I, I loved... Uh, Eric Coleman, Senator Coleman's been a, 
a, really a solid uh, supporter in, 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 in the justice fields for years. And, and uh, yeah, well, you know, you know how much I think of, uh, of him and everything else. And, well, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and we, we'd we met up with him, and we, 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 right. we, he knew that we were, like, work, working, working on this. On and we, right? we had a, a, a meeting to sit down and discuss this, so we actually had something to come to him with. And, you know, I got to say, this, this is how much of, a, a, of, of a, a good legislator he is. They had the toughest day in judiciary. Oh, they yeah. had they they had oh, to, they had oh, to basically yeah. oh, the day uh, we met with them work, work, work oh. out with with, with <laughs> oh, the governor that they weren't going to approve one one of, one oh, of his, uh, guys, his judges judges oh because the guy was off I mean you know oh, I can say it. he was yeah, he was yeah, off yeah, his rocker yeah, no, uh, yeah. <laughs> he was he was off in La La Land poor, and they were poor. just like you know this this is like this oh. guy can't go back up and be a judge he's like this is what a day that was huh that so was he's you know this is like eight o'clock on a friday night and uh yeah he still sat down and he, he still and, got he let come he in. sat down and he met with met us with us yeah because yep. we had a four o'clock appointment originally yeah. oh yeah um sat down and met with us and um you know, we we talked about this, and and he's looking at it, and I'm showing him like the differences in between it, and he's like, "I never saw this." No, I know. I, I never, I, I never saw this. He never, no, no. And um, you know, and we're 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 going, we're explaining. He's like, you know, I'm looking at us like, you know, yeah, I can live, I could probably live with like a lot of this stuff, and. And then, and then uh, you know, you could just tell he was just so weary from this. <laughs> this is where this is where you gotta love Father Russ. <laughs> so, so, so towards the end, after you get done with it, with, with this spiel about this is about the prisoners and everything else, and this is you know where we need to be. <laughs> the guy, the guy was like, you know, he was like looking haggard. <laughs> Your 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 wonderful lie. Father looks at him and he's he's like, "You're the man. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one that can get this done." He is the man. <laughs> and he looks he back is at, the man. He, he looks is at the him man. And he says, "He says I'm the man." Uh, yeah, <laughs> You're the man. He certainly is. <laughs> Senator Coleman is the man. He's you know. So he's, the like, man. he's the man I'd want for governor. I so we're, we're right. like, well, is this workable? Yeah. yeah. He's like, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's what what ended up happening after this is um, um, the bill was written just like what we had uh, yeah, put out in front, put of out us. in front of us. The original bill was, was brought up, mm -hmm. and then the other part was that um, uh, Senator Fasano and Senator Kissel right. went to the sentencing commission and was like, "This is there, you know," the, and and they came to an agreement on on that on that bill, and, and that's going to bring about. You know the changes that are you know they were all like in the testimony and 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 up up uh, in in, uh, in in the public hearings they were like you know third time's a charm yeah this is this is like getting done so I mean it's interesting how much grassroots stuff you 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 have to do and you know well and the other thing is people are afraid of their senators and representatives they don't yeah. do it everybody complains about politicians and i really get upset because they are people working hard for you they are. and anybody who says oh they're all crooks or they're all, they're full of crap they don't really understand these are regular people that work hard for their constituencies all the time okay so we don't agree all the time so we're on different opinions they've got to deal with with all kinds of people with all types of dif different opinions. They got to deal with nutbags like me who've got an army of people who shut down their phones, who'll get out there and, and, and do whatever we have to do. And what we're trying to do though is find common ground. When you sit down with almost all politicians, either side of the aisle, you find out they're really good people. They they're dedicated and they wouldn't be where they are. Who needs to be in that? I hate to say it. Who needs to be governor of Connecticut in the in right now today in the mess the finances are in? I don't care, Republican or a Democrat. You're sitting in a seat where you've got to satisfy all these various sources and issues and everything else like that, and everybody's fighting for a piece of the pie, and the pie's only so big.
Yeah. And of course, we, we fight real hard, uh, obviously, for our, our people, and it's personal. Yep. There's no question on either one of the issues that we deal with. Obviously, the disability issue, a lot of people didn't know for years because I've always kept a lower key on the disabilities, although I've been dealing with ADA since, since the 70s. Always low key because my convicted status and justice would get in the way that would be an issue. Whereas on the justice issues, I've always been out front. I'm the ex-convict, I'm the ex-convict priest, I'm the prisoner and stuff like that, did the union. So it's always been there transparently. But, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and of course, I build with action people. I don't need anybody who's not going to get out and make a phone call. I, I don't need, I don't need yeah. 600 people who aren't going to do anything. I need, I need six to 10 that are, will, will do what you say. Obviously, thank God we have, God bless you, you're a lot more out there than that. But that's what we need, you know? I mean, while we're doing this, you, we were at the legislature, uh, Bobby DeLello on the 11th goes to Washington, and yep. his testimony is up on the Facebook. He's testifying over, uh, over uh, 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 solid confinement, uh, uh, solitary confinement, okay, which is torture. You know, people just do not understand. We're in coalition with, you know, uh, National uh, Campaign Against Torture. Been been with them for years. One of the ministries that deal with them, and we deal with their board, almost all the church groups and everything else. So we do not only local stuff, we do national stuff, you know. And we do, well, we do obviously in New England. We've affected New England for a lot of years now. Uh, uh, the National Prisoners' Rights Association, which is um, the founder of that, was the first union in the country and stuff like that. The New England uh, uh, Prisoners Association, mine also, with, with associates and partners that, you don't, that are not out front, you know, for whatever reason. You know, a lot of people don't want people to know that they were convicts and bad guys and got bad women that changed their lives. They, okay, I... I decided that, you know, this is what I was going to do years ago, and and and, and uh, to be able to be a voice uh, for individuals I left behind, like Ralph, okay, who I, I left behind. We have a saying: when one of them is chained, we are not free, and uh, and and we mean that. It's not a, you know. And the other reason that I do this, obviously, is to show convicts, ex-convicts, young men coming mm -hmm. out, that you can do this. You can, you can change and you can work to change things in society, whether anybody likes you or not. Nobody has to like you, and most likely they're never going to like you because you did something wrong. I try to tell all of you, if you're looking for everybody to grab and hug you and say, oh, you're a wonderful person, you need to forget it because that shouldn't be one of your priorities. Just do the right thing. It should be a priority. Stay the hell out of prison. Try to find a job if you can, and, and uh, if not, live under a bridge. Go to a nice warm place and stay out of trouble. Because nobody wants to be chained to a wall, or in in in, in it shouldn't anyways. It's better to go fishing. Which which you I know. mean, you know, we talk about change, and uh, yeah. you know, I've been working in the human service field oh, since you've, I've been right. like 13, 14 years old. Right. Um, and you you do you do get to see that people can change, and and um, you know, I think everybody should have an opportunity to find that within themselves because it, it ha a lot of this has to come from within yourself. It can't come from the outside. Well, see, you know that. See, you, yeah. you sit across from me as a straight person. No, you, you know, you sit across from me, but a straight person who watched people change, and, and you know bad guys that mm -hmm. changed over the years without being a bad guy, thank God. Uh, okay, but yeah, maybe you, you saw that you don't want to go there. And, but but you've, yeah, I mean, you've helped a lot of guys who were in the same place I was, and, and that's been your career. In, in, in a sense, and, 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 and obviously you have empathy for us, for, who <laughs> we probably don't have much <laughs> empathy for anybody. <laughs>
you see Father get red all over the TV, you know. Uh, okay? It's chaining the beast, though. The, the idea of change is to understand who you are, where you've been, what you've done, and you don't want to repeat it, okay, to get you in a situation that is negative. Not that, obviously, I have a lot of people who know I care about a lot of people, and, uh, uh, okay, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not easy. <laughs> because... You don't want anybody hurt. I mean, you don't want anybody hurt. I mean, I look at society and what it's done to the homeless people, what it's done to the mentally ill that we don't take care of, you know? And, uh, you know, so what can I say? <laughs> you know. So taking the shackles off for a minute, let's talk about what's going on around here in, like, New London. Oh, my because, goodness. Because, because I, I, I don't know. I, we're, we're TV talking, stations we're, are, we're, are, 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 are plugging Darren, 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 forgive me if you're watching my show. I didn't mean, uh, okay, I was thinking about you and Bobby. Bobby Homesick, you, I know, are watching the show right now. I also want to, before I forget... Carol of uh, Vermont was supposed to be yeah. on, and Dennis uh, Bradley. Bradley, uh, okay. Uh, we we just couldn't get him here in the last minute. It would have been a rush and everything else like that. So we postponed the show. They'll be back on another another time, and we we've got a lot of but, but, stuff but, to catch but, up but on. Back to okay. Daryl, Daryl, and Daryl. Okay. Apparently, that uh, your yeah, channel yeah, thirty yeah, like seems. To be, uh, you know, go, calling him up and, <laughs> and asking him about, did, did you take care of the snow in New London? Oh yeah, we're doing okay. So, so, so can and, we can we get a definitive answer? I, Are you taking care of the snow in New London? No. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. No. You should see across from my house. Okay? Uh, okay, across from my house, there is 12 feet high piles of snow. They, they come along because they want to let the teachers park in the, in, in, in the school there. I'm up by, uh, I'm up by uh, 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 St. Sophie's, okay, in the, in, in the school there, okay? So they got their plow out, and they piled all this snow directly across the street from our houses, okay? I mean, piles of this huge mounds of snow. So bad that, okay, our vehicles, we, we couldn't get out to get our plows in to plow our side of the street in. Okay, okay, this is what he's talking about. Yeah, we're doing good. Now, thank God where I am, it's big, wide well, street. Well, up you there, know what the problem know? here is. Well, I mean, yeah, much, yeah. much like he was like, you know, the yeah. fire hydrant yeah. painter and he wanted to be part of the Department of Public L Works. Listen to. I, I, I hear he wants to be a plow truck driver I, now. Oh or maybe God. he can learn how Public Works actually <laughs> is supposed to work. Well, he's he's killing these guys. I mean, yeah. that's, that's what he's doing. He's killing the guys. They're working like crazy people out there. He don't care about them. The other. The other thing is, all of his money uh, on his raising his money for his campaign, the vast majority has comes from out of town. He's nothing but a paper tiger. All his support now is from out of town. He's got union people out of town talking about what a great guy he is. Okay, the the guys that don't live here, nobody that votes here is going to deal with this guy. If you you, you got to be out of your mind. If you're going to vote for this guy, you see what he's doing to our city. This guy is unbelievable. Well, I hear he's opening up a, you know, I heard a rumor that he might be opening up a beauty salon in Westerly, Rhode Island. Well, you know, you know, he is. He's a carpet bagger to begin with, and I, I'm going to throw like my bet out on here, and I, I'd be happy to place a hundred bucks to anybody who's willing to take the bet that if he loses this election, I guarantee you, within a year, he will not be living in New London. Oh. I am I am making that bet out there that I guarantee if he loses this election and 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 I and I say that because you know he he swooped into town oh, he's and, and, out. And, and 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 I think he's going to go back out to where to where his family and and everybody else who are, are, are his supporters he's are, which is out in Westerly. Uh, Westerly, Rhode Island. He's yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly right. But, I mean, he was a, he left them in the lurch. That's what he's going to do. I think he was thought, thought he was going to get an appointment. He was going to leave, leave here. He said he wasn't running. He said 
five, five, six times, solid times. We, we've got him. We've got him on tape. We've got him. You know, that he said he wasn't going to run. Then he says, "I'm going to run." That was because everybody thought he was going to get an appointment. They hate him. You, the state house thinks he's the biggest joke on the pike. Mm -hmm. He keeps telling people he's got all this support. He hasn't got no support. They need to get rid of him. Fun fundraising. I need, I need to stay away. I got too many family in the Coast Guard. But we want the museum here, okay? And no Coast Guard museum is going to raise enough money with this guy keep claiming like he's done something with the museum. He's done nothing. He's done, I got to say this. The people who have been working on this museum have been working on it for years. For years. Not, he was never even around here. All the old school that everybody gets mad about, that they talk about the old, uh, what do they call them, the old? The old guard. The old guard, okay? Yeah, the people that who, old guard people who was care really, about this area. Yeah, it came, yeah. Though, that old guard has been the ones that have been working on, in, uh, on, on, on the museum. They were the ones that initially started to bring the museum here. The past admiral, I can't think of his name. I know Admiral Papp. Well, I don't really, you know, but I know who Admiral Papp is. I, you know, he probably knows me better than I know him. I see him running all the time. He waves. <coughs> uh, but Admiral Papp it, it really has worked unbelievable on, on bring it, bringing the museum here. Uh, Joe Courtney has. All, those are the people who really, uh, you know, Peg Curtin, uh, okay. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I'll, I'll think. I'll think of his name in a minute. <laughs> okay, uh, all, all, all the, uh, but all the old the people have been here for years. They were the really ones that really worked hard on getting here, and it may come here. Okay, and, and, and as family member, of Coast Guard family member, I want, you, you know, I would like, well, I don't want it here if he's here. This, this, he goes around and tells everybody that the crime rate's fine. We have the highest crime rate in the state of Connecticut. Highest crime rate. It's 2.3 in Connecticut with 10.7. And he absolutely gets on there and he lies. That's, that's uh, FBI and state statistics. You can Google it or look it up. Highest crime rate in the whole damn state. Okay, our cops, our police are totally overworked. We got no police force. He gutted the police force. And he got the, he got the chief of police in the situation. She can't even tell what happened. Everybody says this happened, that happened, something happened. My butt, nobody knows what happened because so, she can't talk. So, so, you know, I mean, so I, 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 I hear he, he, he has the whole idea that, uh, you know, he's doing this by the book. What book? Whose book? <laughs> what, which, which which book is he talking about? Yeah, I, because you know what I'm talking about. Well, he's the, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. I know what you're talking about. But I try to tell people you need to look up Bell California and 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 Rizzo, okay, who was the highest paid. Uh, Rizzo was the highest paid. Uh, uh, he w he wasn't a mayor. He was the uh, like a first selectman. Uh, yeah, like but, but oh, no, or no caretaker. The, no, no, the what do they call him? Like we used to have our government had whatever, whatever they know the leader of the city, right? Yep. Highest paid in the United States. City Un manager. City manager. manager. Thank you. Ah, there we go. My angel just <laughs> yeah, yeah. The highest paid city manager. Thank you very much, Mary Jane. In the whole United States, he made, I mean, unbelievable amount of money, and he took control of Bell, California. I mean, that's the, I know, that's the blueprint he's working on. Him. And if he had come in and he had worked a little slower without hurting all these people that he got rid of because of his political views and, and, and knew how to run the city and put in people who have absolutely absolutely no qualifications whatsoever, never ran city government, put people in there. You gotta be kidding me, you, you know. He, if he had taken his time and, and gave himself a year, he would have taken over the city. 
what we have right now is a, the ability to stop him, put a first responder, and I, and I say first responder, you've got to understand who Michael Passero is. Michael Passero is a first responder. That's the kind of guy that runs into the flames and the fires while everybody else is running the hell out of there. That's the man who goes in and fixes it, shuts it down and fixes it. That's the kind of guy Michael Passero is. That's why I support Michael Passero, because I got a bunch of first responders in my family. You know, my brother's a sheriff. We have three fire chiefs in the family. Those kind of guys, and I was not that kind of guy, okay? I was probably more the kind of guy that <laughs> Fenosio <laughs> wishes he could be, <laughs> okay? That's the kind of guy I want running my city because I know the bottom line, he's going to do right for everybody. He can't help it. That's why he's in the job he's in. That's why he's the fireman that he is. That's why he's the attorney he is. Michael Passero is the best guy that you have in this city to run this city. And you've got to throw the bum up. He's a liar. He, he, he doesn't even know how to tell the truth. And he's going back to Westerly. Yeah, right. I, that, that's a good that's bet. That's my bet. Yeah. My, my bet is oh, he's yeah, going yeah, back yeah, to oh, Westerly. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I hear it. Well, the, the, the other part of this is, you know, everybody's got to remember, look at all this stuff that's happened. This is, oh. this is, this is not one event. It's not just a yes. snowstorm. No, it's, it's, not, it's not just some, somebody had to bail him out by calling up the mayor of Bridgeport to ask for an extra 10 <laughs> wild trucks. <laughs> To come down, to come down, to, and, no, yeah, and take yeah, right. away the snow right. that 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 still hasn't has his side of the street over at City Hall all nice and cleaned up, but the other side of the street where other people need to get to the post office or be able to like walk around in a functioning city and get through the sidewalks. Our whole side of the street, you can't get out. It's unbelievable. The school got their own little guy that does his thing. But we're talking disabilities. You, yeah. you know, I run a disability house. Up the street, it's disability. We're talking aged and disabled. You could, you got to be kidding me. You got to, I mean, this, this, this thing is outrageous. He, he is outrageous. And, and he's trying to take credit right. f for, for a wreck. Uh, you know, he's trying to make it into, I don't know what he's trying to make it into. And people think he can get elected. He is a paper tiger. He's a paper tiger. Nobody, very, very few people that vote here in the city are the ones that he's talking about supporting him. All the support talk you find out are coming from outside the city. Mm -hmm. Some of them are outside the state. They're coming from Westerly. Okay? And, oh, and, 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 and who does he use for contractors and stuff like that? I don't believe. I'd have to check. Yeah, I'd have to check on this. I can't swear on it, but I'll bet you on all the projects that he, he's done in this city that he hasn't used one city contractor. Somebody that lives here, eats here, pays their damn taxes here, that he's used on anything. Overpays their taxes. Over, yeah, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. For the services <laughs> we're getting, yes. you got to be kidding me. Uh, yeah, I'm a little disturbed at that this year, no kidding. But, but, you know, uh, and, and uh, I, I started, I, 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 it's, I, I have to, I started with him. I know who his core group is. I know the kind of individuals they are from the beginning. Not from the ones that got on later on, but I know who they are. And we started with him because we believed in him. I, that's how he knows his public relations. We basically showed him how to do it. Which was a mistake, okay? But uh, okay, and he's got Zach Levy. I I, I love Zach. I, I love Zach, except Zach's on the wrong side. I mean, you know. Uh, uh, and I'm sure Zach probably has plenty of friends at uh, Channel 32. Uh, uh, <laughs> That's well, he, why he's going to get him on so hard, so, so much. Got, uh, well, Zach listened, and he went. <laughs> he became a union guy too. Okay, so and and Zach's a great guy, but Zach is not Fanuzio. Okay, and that's the problem, okay? You got a great guy like Zach fronting. Zach is a straw man, you know? It's maybe like the guy I'd use to do, you know. 
<laughs> and you're laughing. The guy I used to go across the aisle to get yeah. me in the door. Your Republican <laughs> liaison. Yeah, yeah, my Republican liaison. Well, that's what he's doing. You're a nice guy. They love you. You know, you talk like them. You are, okay, you, you, you can get it. They ain't going to let me in the door, okay, because they know I come to that door with a hatchet. The problem is, Fenozio's he's slick. Every, I, I don't underestimate him at all. In fact, I know his teachers. I know his teachers. I know where he went to school. I checked out on him. I was told by one of his teachers, one of his professors, that he was, a, he was an excellent student. Okay, but he should have stayed there. It doesn't mean, just because you're a good academic student does not mean you have the smarts to run an organization. That's why they teach. Those who can do, those who can't teach. There's a reason why they say that, okay? There's a reason why, why uh, okay, practical experience is worth a tremendous amount, okay? And he's got none. Well, I mean, that, get, that brings about, and I've taken courses on this, on leadership, you know, and, 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 and where, where your, your power base really comes from. And people, you know, they don't admire him and want to follow him because he's, you know, forthright and he, he's standing up and he's doing the right things for like people. You know what? Some people, I think, f deal with him because out of, out of fear. Yeah, he tries yeah. to he tries he to he tries to in, a, in, in, intimidate him. Right, right. You know, and 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 you bully somebody. You know, sooner or later, you're going to find like somebody's going to be able to come back and bully you. Mm -hmm. I offered to fight him, but he found a way to like slip out of like the whole <laughs> thing <laughs> because I don't have like a record. And I said, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll get professional training. I'll do all this stuff. What do you want? But did he want to? No. Yeah, no. Not now. Not to change the subject, but we'll leave. So, uh, our, our next guest. Wh where are we? Okay. Well, we only got a couple of minutes, so I want to. Next week we next got week. we we got Representative uh, Melissa Zebron. Oh, Zebron on yes. Who is the the ranking uh, Republican uh, House member right. on Appropriations Committee? So right. we're going to be talking about. Uh, the budgetary where mess. Where the money is, okay. Where, where, what's well, going, on going on with the money and, and, and the money. everything else along those lines. After that, next the week. We got Michael Passero back on. We got on Mike. It. Mike's on at the end of the week, tw at the end of the month, the 20th, right? Yeah. Right, right. Yep. I believe it's the 20th. Yep. Okay, we got Michael. And then we have... We, we got my boxing coach. The boxing That's why I was talking coming. about the okay, boxing. Okay, so we got the boxing <laughs> coach coming up, right? Yeah. And, and and we got Paul coming. We got Paul. Paul Formica. Paul Formica's coming coming on, coming on back ninth. on. Okay, yep. so and then we're, we're then we're looking into down the road. Okay, hey pal. What a great. <laughs> It's been a great week. It's been a, we we've been very lucky and a good good year and stuff like that. Hope hopefully we've informed a lot of people of what's going on, and uh, we we I, you know and I got to say because because we uh, I had a very nice meeting uh, this morning uh, with with Len Fasano and uh, the guy was all was all all smiles around us for for working together on this and you know what. It was so nice to see so many people that they got around one issue to be able to to work it out. And when they see that they're that close together, they're willing to go work on other things. And that's how we create bipartisanship in this. We were good. We, uh, yeah. And I want to, and, and again, I want to thank all our, all our senators, uh, our representatives, and everything else that work so hard on, on our issues. We love you all. Either side of the aisle, even father. You, you, you know, I might yell and get angry at you, but we love you all. God bless you all. We're going to run right now, Dominic. Dominic Thank did you. such an excellent job uh, for us so far this year. Going, going great. Uh, you please pray for me, and I'll pray for you, and I'll see you uh, next week. <laughs>